ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The show starts in three, two, one, go. Good morning, Kane Sport. It's April 4th, 2022. I'm Gary Furman, the publisher of Kanesport.com, joined as always by our managing editor, Matt Shodell, as we discuss the news of the day. And in this case, the news of the weekend, as the Miami Hurricanes had their typical Saturday practice uh, that included quite a bit of scrimmaging. And um, Matt, uh, we've been getting details in here the last couple days. Um, I'm sure we'll continue to get more. But uh, a couple things uh, stood out to, to, to me and I'm sure to you. Uh, one, every single account that we heard and got was that the defense, somehow, I'm not quite sure how they're doing it, but the defense was absolutely dominant out there on Saturday. And, um, you know, the the, the thing that uh, also struck me was I heard that the defense was doing so well in the early stages of the work. And by the way, they were scrimmaging, for the most part, ones versus ones and twos versus two which is a total deviation from the past that I'm sure has everybody very excited out there in the Canes nation um, because it is the right way to develop your football team. You have to challenge your players to the utmost uh, every single minute of every single day. And the only way you can really do that is going best against best, not making it easy for them uh, to accomplish things on the practice field. And that certainly wasn't the case. And uh, apparently there was a lot of frustration building on the offensive side of the football uh, to the point where uh, it started to show uh, both verbally and in body language. And apparently Mario Cristobal um, really laid into his guys on that side of the ball quite a bit, trying to instill a culture where you don't get rattled when things go bad, you get tougher, you get better, you you, you fix it, you stay together. And um, so Matt, uh, you put it all together. And it does sound, uh, we'll elaborate a little more here, but it sounds like they got a lot done on Saturday on Green Tree Practice Field. Yeah, I think it's as much about a culture thing as, as seeing the actual team at this early stage. But, you know, Marcus well re- referenced what you were talking about when he said um, he told the team the enemy is the other team, not our, not within our team. And we've seen so many times before where, you know, a player will get into a scuffle with another player on the practice field and this and that. Uh, and, and fans have generally looked at that as a good thing. Um, they think it shows intensity. But in this day and age, really, it's about building that team bond and cohesiveness and everyone pulling in the same direction. And that's really what Mario's instilling. I, I wasn't shocked that the defense dominated the scrimmage. Um, we really haven't seen, we've been saying all along that we haven't seen the offense do a heck of a lot. And that Tyler Van Dyke looks great, but there's been a lot of drops. Not a lot of people have been standing out. Um, you know, from what we heard, Jacoby George had a good scrimmage. And um, other than that, I think Frank Gladson had a couple of good catches, but he also had some down moments. And, and the secondary apparently played very well. Um, but we weren't allowed to watch it, so let's make that clear. We're just hearing this from secondhand, unless you want to call people who watch it firsthand sources. Uh, I would call them secondhand sources. <laughs> and some of them were saying it was almost impossible to see a lot of it because there was a million people, you know, there's recruits there and there was family members there and there was, um, you know, all, all sorts of people invited, but not the media. <laughs> God forbid the media is out there. Um, but yeah, I, I like it when the defense wins the spring. Uh, that's how it was when Miami was great. The foundation has always been defense wins championships. And I just hope the defense is that good. And not that the offense is just floundering with the playbook, which I, I keep hearing is um, really unwieldy at this early point. Uh, but again, they have plenty of time to learn it. It's just they're getting a ton thrown at them on offense. And we even saw a play last practice where just a tight end and a receiver ran up, wound up in the exact same spot just in, I think it was in seven on seven. <laughs> and, you know, they just, there's clearly a disconnect for some guys to know what to do at this point. And that's okay. That's, that's why we're in the spring. If it happens in the fall, a week before the season, then we got a problem. Um, that's my thoughts. <laughs> um, you know, when you hear that the um, the defense is dominant at any point during practice, when you look at the 
the bulk of the impact talent that at least we perceive to be the better talent on the team is on the offensive side of the ball. The first thing that comes to my mind is how are they doing this? So I did a little deeper dive uh, just into that aspect of it. And um, basically I found out a couple things. I, I, I found out that, that Kevin Steele and this elite defensive coaching staff that he has, he has the guys on that side of the ball playing very fast. And when they're playing very fast, and like you noted, the offense is still getting used to a new playbook and um, and feeling its way, uh, that can have a lot to do with it. Um, the other thing I found out is that uh, Kevin Steele's schemes can sometimes um, be a little tricky to, to decipher. And for example, Tyler Van Dyke, as well as he's practiced this entire spring, threw an interception very early in the scrimmage, which, uh, you know, kind of took took everybody by surprise. So Tyler doesn't throw many interceptions. And um, I believe it was Keontra Smith was able to uh, pick off a, a Tyler Van Dyke pass early in, in the scrimmage. So a lot of positive things there. The scheme, the fact that the kids are playing fast within the scheme. And uh, the other thing I'm hearing, Matt, is that the defensive back play, even though – your two projected starting cornerbacks, uh, Tyreek Stevenson and Kevin Porter, are not practicing this spring. That you know the the the, the other guys, you know Al Blades, DJ Ivy, and, and and these guys are playing at a real high level because they're getting elite coaching from Coach Adai, and uh, just win 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 plus 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 every way you slice and dice it on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, and I, I will add, I mean, I, I talked to somebody who was close enough that they heard, you know, when they said ones go in, ones go in, twos go in, twos go in. And it was about half and half. They, they actually started the scrimmage apparently ones versus twos and then migrated over to ones versus ones. So, again, it's hard to say who really was going against who all the time. Was Tyler Van Dyke always with the first, you know, against the first team defense or most of the time or half the time? Uh, but, you know, I also heard, I heard, for instance, Thomas Davis and Cyrus Moss did really well. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, because again, they're playing <laughs> against themselves. Does that mean the offensive tackles are bad? Were they playing against the ones in, in most of these instances or against the twos in most of these instances? Because if they're playing against the ones offensive, if they're playing against the one offensive tackles, I'm not okay with that. Um, Thomas Davis and Cyrus Moss should not be beating Zion Nelson and TJ Scaife. I'm sorry. That should not happen. Uh, unless these guys are somehow reached a different level. But from everything, what I've heard is, you know, Thomas Davis is sort of like a third down undersized rush end who, who I think will play a lot this year and probably can get a handful of sacks. Um, but Cyrus Moss, I mean, he has no weight to him at all. Six foot six. He's a guy who right now pretty much can move around pretty well and put his arms up in passing lanes. But I, you know, he shouldn't be dominating as a true freshman <laughs> against a veteran offensive tackle. Uh, so with that said, um, the defensive backs, is it good or bad that they're doing well without the starters? I mean, Daryl Porter's not here. Tyreek Stevenson's hurt. Again, I, I like the defense to win uh, this, the spring practices. Does it mean the wide receivers are not on the same page as the quarterbacks? Does it mean the offensive line can't protect anybody long enough to get the ball down the field? Or is it just a case of an offensive playbook issue? I think it's an offensive playbook issue. I think once the offense gets in sync, uh, it'll be much better in terms of more even keeled. I hope the defense still keeps dominating. And I think uh, once the defense gets some of its starters back, um, which won't be this spring, but once once they're fully healthy and get the, the other transfers in and things like that, I think it'll be a much improved defense. So, um, so yeah, look, I, I wish we were allowed to watch at least some of the scrimmage so we're not sort of just going what other people say. Uh, but just so everyone out there understands, this is just sort of what we're hearing from different people, and different people are not reporters. These are... You know, I can't tell you who they are, but they're people who are out there watching who may or may not really know what's going on in, in great detail. Yeah, cross, cross section of sources. We could leave it at that. Um, all right. So, this Saturday practice and scrimmage brought, brought a parade of recruits to Green Tree on, uh, on Saturday. And uh, that means we've got a ton of recruiting coverage to discuss. But before we get to that, we also have a brand new commercial. From the folks at Life Wallet, and this one is pretty damn good. Let me show it to you. We here at Life Wallet take security very seriously.
our data security team is working constantly to make sure that your data is not accessed by anybody who you don't authorize. Hey, what's up, man? Yeah, Excuse me, sir. Thank you. And uh, he's thinking about it, and I'll be talking to CC. Well, we'll talk to you tomorrow. We use leading technology standards like biometric data to make sure that only you have access to your data and your identity is protected. LifeWallet gives you access to your entire medical history and information at the touch of your finger so that it can save you time and can save your life. Data transfer complete. I mean, I mean, like, have you ever, like, listen, we were there, we watched them film that commercial, Matt. Um, it's cool to see the finished product. And, um, but, my, you know, my God, like, you know, CBS this morning did a, a feature this past weekend on NAL and a lot of, a, a big chunk of it was on John Ruiz and and life wallet and, and the work that they're doing with Miami players. Um, and I mean, you got to hand it to them. Like, I don't know how much money it's making them. I don't know. Like, I know it's getting them a lot of attention, at least in the Canes fan base for sure. Um, but man, that is a professional freaking commercial. I mean, uh, I'm a mad applause to Johnny Ruiz, uh, John Ruiz's son who produced that and I guess kind of schemed it up or whatever. Um, but I don't know. I liked it. I, I, I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, the, the, the one obvious missing ingredient, which would have made it an actually a good commercial and a watchable commercial would be, he opens the briefcase and inside is the FSU playbook. That would have made it a great commercial. <laughs> I don't know why the briefcase was empty. I don't understand. I don't know. Did they steal the FSU playbook while they were walking from the car to the office? I don't understand where the FSU playbook went. Uh, I assume Mario Cristobal has it in his office somewhere, but. I don't know, man. I, I, I love how they put the names of the offensive linemen on the screen. Like, that's awesome. I, 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 I liked it. It was like, it was like uh, Mission Impossible. So that's, that's what we're cool. going for. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, that'll be a tough act for them to follow in, in future uh, commercial creations and stuff that was that's a, that's a good one we'll be using that a little bit here moving forward all right um anyway so let's get back to um the news of the day and stories that are on the website and parade of recruits out of green tree practice field um a ton of, of, of updates uh for you um none bigger than Jaden rashada he and his whole family including brother roman who is a juco defensive uh back recruit uh, we're on campus for three days and, um, you know, obviously a huge priority. If you turn on the kid's film, it looks great. He's not the only quarterback they're recruiting. So, you know, we still got to keep an eye on some of the others. Um, but Jaden Rashada, very good looking prospect, Matt. I'm sure they would have loved to get a commitment from him this past weekend. Um, we got the update on the website without giving the whole thing away so that people can still, um, enjoy reading it. Um, your thoughts on where things stand right now with Jaden Rashada? Yeah, I think Miami's in a good spot. Uh, basically, we we I talked to Jaden's dad, Harlan Senior, for for a long time yesterday afternoon. He's a really nice guy, and uh, it's funny because um, I I texted him, and, and you know we don't want to we don't want to get Julio Florence, we don't want anyone to Julio Florence us anymore. So we just reach out once or twice. Very simple. I called him once during the visit. I texted him once during the visit. And he texted me back uh, the night before last. And uh, after I texted him, very nice. He said, Matt, let me, I'm reading it. <laughs> Matt, let me know if you still want to connect. Now he texted me that at 1.31 a.m., okay? <laughs> to which I responded, and then I'll read this also. Uh, of course, and this is, this is the next morning. This is not at 1.32 a.m., okay? This is the next, I did not wake up to the text. This is the next day. Uh, I said, of course, I'm earlier to bed than Mario Cristobal, I guess. LOL. Anyway, let me know what time works for you to catch up. Thanks, Matt at Kane Sport. So we did finally connect. He got back to California. Um, obviously, things have been very, very hectic for him. Uh, he now has two sons that are Miami recruits, not just uh, Jaden, who's a four-star quarterback. Uh, but it came as a little bit of a surprise to us, and I think maybe even to the Rashada family, that Miami actually is interested in Roman. 
you know, initially when they made Roman an official visitor, you could think, oh, okay, well, they're making him an official visitor sort of so that Jaden can have the full experience. And it's sort of, you know, it's, it's totally legal, right? Because he's a recruit. He, has a, he was a BYU commitment. Bring in Roman. Jaden gets the full experience as the, as the visitor, right, with his dad and his other brother on the visit. And they get everything the same as an official visitor. They can go on campus, have meals paid for, be around the coaches, everything. It's brilliant, okay? But it turns out Miami actually does have a spot for Roman. And as soon as Roman found that out, he decommitted from BYU. And, you know, we're still sort of trying to get a, a, a grasp on if this would be somehow they would get scholarship money for him, um, non-football, or if he's actually a football scholarship player because, you know, he's borderline Miami level. Uh, so, you know, whatever the case may be, they clearly told Roman and told the dad he has a spot in our team and and they will not, somehow he will not be paying money, whether it's an academic scholarship, I don't know if it's academics or football spot. One way or the other, he's got a spot. Uh, it sounds like he's very likely to come. And I think if he comes, I, I would be very surprised if Jaden doesn't come. The funny thing is they've never, ever played on the same team together because they're separated <laughs> by four years. Uh, so this would be a first. You know, I asked the dad, actually, because, look, I'm a father. I went to all my son's games. And, I, and my other son played soccer when he was young. I remember if they ever played together on the same team. And I asked the dad yesterday, I said, have these two ever played on the same team together? You know, maybe when... Jaden was in eighth grade, was he on varsity or something, you know, who knows? And uh, the dad thinks about it for a minute and he says, you know what? He says, I, I, there was, when, when, when Jaden was in eighth grade, they played on the same seven on seven team. And he says, then he says, oh, no, 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 that was the other son, you know, Harlan, Harlan Jr. <laughs> you too, I said, you have too many sons playing football. How do you keep track? You know, um, he says, I do. I have too many, too many kids playing football. So, uh, but anyway, I, I think there's a great chance Miami gets both of them. Uh, you know, it does sound like Jaden wants to make a decision sooner rather than later. He's planning to come back again early May. I don't think he wants to take it to June or July if he doesn't have to. I, I, I you know, I think he's going on a couple, a couple more visits, maybe two or three more visits. He'll take another visit to Miami just to make sure. And I, I, I would hope by mid-May he's on board because this is not a recruit who wants to take a lot of time to make a decision. Um, you know, that's just my thoughts on it. All right. So uh, we've got updates on the Rashada family. Um also, uh, an update on uh, a Tampa Catholic athlete by the name of Lewis Carter, who visited Miami and really enjoyed his visit. Um, Kasimi Osceola, defensive tackle. John Walker, who had a five-hour visit on Saturday. Uh, Venice defensive end Damon Wilson, who had a good visit. Uh, American Heritage 2025 running back Byron Lewis. Uh, 2024 Fort Lauderdale Dillard defensive end Joshua Lloyd. Uh, Matt, the the common theme you're, you're missing theme. guys, man. What about what about Lamar Seymour? The Lamar Seymour yeah, update. Lamar about, Seymour was another Antoine, one. Antoine Jackson, the Georgia commit visit. What about Andy Jean visit? We have too yeah. much content, Gary. I can understand why you wouldn't uh, remember all the stories we've been doing in the last forty eight yeah. hours. And and the, <laughs> yeah, the 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 bottom line is this: um, there's a common theme through all of it. And you guys can read yeah. read it all and and catch up. And um, the Andy Jean one is actually interesting because. Uh, he decommitted from Miami, uh, had some pressure from some people around him to not be committed so early. But I think he's had, you know, maybe having a little bit of seller's remorse on that, you know. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point he jumps back into the fold. Um, but the common theme that we're seeing, hearing is everybody ha says great things about the visits. They have a great time. They love Miami. Uh Miami, if, if this holds up, which it never does, but if it holds up, there won't be enough scholarships, Matt, to take all these guys. There's, what's that? Are you kidding? I don't understand. <laughs> well, do I mean, mean, every single kid that visits, you just said, there's, like you said, there, 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 there's probably 10, 12 kids that, that are high-priority recruits that were here this weekend. Like, there's only 25 spots. There's not only 25 spots. There's not. There are so many spots. They can They could take... Oh my gosh. You have to remember, they can take 25 plus subtract backwards to however many were left over from early enrollees this year, which is how many kids came in early? Seven? But remember, they're they're now they're over the numbers, so they're gonna have to eliminate some people too. So I mean it's listen, if for, there's a, there, this is gonna be a numbers juggling game. It will be if everyone wants yeah. to come, sure. And we have an update this morning on Jalen Brown, who's a you know, I think he'll wind up in the class. So it, it is gonna be interesting. They, they don't need 39 
recruits in this class, including seven transfers that are free transfers. You just don't need that. It doesn't make any sense. You got to sort of balance out your classes at some point. Uh, I just, I'm not sure that Mars is the point where he's trying to balance anything right now. He just wants the best possible talent because there's a talent deficiency. And I think once they figure out, okay, these kids want to come and da, 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 you know, you're not taking six wide receivers, for instance, right? So they'll figure it out. It'll all work its way out. I'd like to see them make it a race, make it a race to commit. Everyone wants to, you know, remember everyone used to want to be at Miami and it was just first come first serve. That's not the way it is anymore. <laughs> Miami has to get back to that level where people really are dying to be here to the point that. They want to lock up their spot and and just not take any more any more visits. I mean, you know, there, there's for instance, um, you know, that's pretty much what what Clemson does. There's there's um, you know, there's there's a Clemson commit right here in our backyard, Nathaniel Joseph, right? And he wants to visit Miami. And I've I'm heard gonna predict right now he will flip to Miami. I don't disagree. And I, I've heard he's surreptitiously taken a couple of visits to Miami, but he won't talk about it. You know, he doesn't do interviews. And Clemson doesn't allow commitments to take visits. They drop you. That's what they tell you. They drop you. They freak out on you, whatever it is. So, you know, this is this is what Miami needs to get to, though, to the point where you commit. That means you're not taking other visits and you're done. Not, okay, we're so happy to have you. Thank you so much for committing. Of course you can visit Georgia. Of course you can visit Alabama. We wouldn't want to hinder your recruitment. No, you commit to us, you're done. That's what it means. And that's what it should mean. And you want to be here because we're the best program for you. And that's it. And we need your number. And if you want to de- if you want to take other visits, well, the next guy's in line who can be a superstar also. And we can't wait around, man. That's where they got to get to. That's what the other programs do. You don't th- you don't see the other programs saying, of course, take visits to everywhere else you want. Of course, go have fun. No. Well, I mean, I will say this though: we're not hearing a lot of high pressure to commit. Like, well, you like, don't want to. That's the whole point. But I mean, they're letting the kids go through the process, and, and right. they're because, because when they commit, they need to be done. When they yeah. come to Mario Cristobal and say, "I am ready to commit," it's because they've done whatever they need to do to get to the point where they don't need to take other visits. You don't want to force a kid or pressure a kid to commit, and then he goes home and tells his parents he committed, and they say, "Well, shouldn't you think about it?" And now that's in the back of his mind which, for the next which month. Is what's happened with happened with Andy Jean? Yeah, exa- that's exactly what happened with Andy Jean. But you know, you don't want that. You just don't no. want that. So, so I think it's all good. I think the kids are coming. They're having a great time. They're not getting high pressure. Uh, there's a lot of confidence in the Miami program right now that these kids will want to choose Miami, that all the local kids that are involved will want to stay home, that some of these kids from around the state, um, like the John Walkers of the world, will want to come to Miami. Uh, there, there is a confidence right now that we haven't seen in a long time. I mean, during the Manny Diaz era, they were afraid to recruit top recruits because they didn't think they could win. So they didn't want to waste their time. And uh, those days are gone folks. Like, you know, and it's, it's great to see. And um, you know, there's so much to talk about and so much to cover and uh, you know, it's all, it, it, it's all good. Now, Matt, you mentioned Jalen Brown, who I was going to get to, um, but he didn't visit this weekend. He was um, on the road somewhere, but um, I've been hearing for a long time that that things are going very well with Jalen Brown. I've heard that he's even helping recruit some other kids. So it, it seems like the, the, the time is short to when he's going to commit. But for some reason, he hasn't done it yet. And, um, I, I, you know, some of that is addressed in the story today. So um, I encourage everybody to take a look at that as well. Um, all right. So that's going to do it for Good Morning Cane Sport for today. A ton of stuff on the website to occupy you and uh, let you get up to speed. We will keep probing for details on the, uh, on the scrimmage and keep adding those on the message boards for you. Uh, So for Matt Shadell, I'm Gary Furman. We thank you for joining us today on good morning, Kane sport, and we'll see you tomorrow, everybody.